Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. Thanks for watching. I just got a question from one of my students about how to choose points to graph using a table. And uh, it, it's likely that in some of the earlier lessons they're just going to give you some values to use. So the question comes up, what values do I choose in order to know what, what points to put on the graph? And it has a lot to do with the way that the equation is structured. So let's look at a couple of different ways that they will be structured, these equations. So this way is a standard form. Uh, for a linear equation, this one is only going to give us a straight line, and that's all we're really concerned about right now. Well, <clears throat> uh, for this, if I was to look at a table and try to figure out values of x and y to put in, uh, technically we can see that the y there is it's kind of a standalone value, right? Uh, which which makes it kind of dangerous to choose values of. So for most, any general standard linear equation like we see right here where it's some kind of x value plus a y value equals some constant like this, um, I, I highly recommend that you guys use 0 for x and then find the 0 for y as well, the corresponding x value there. What this will do is it's going to give you two values to put on the graph, and that's really all you need, especially on our homework because it's computerized, right? After you get two points, it'll graph the line for you, and we all know that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, so technically there shouldn't be any more need for more than just these two points. Uh, this is going to give us the x and y intercepts as well. Uh, the first one here in red will be the y intercept, and this is why this comes out so nice is because when I replace the x with 0 right here, we can see that negative 4 times 0 is 0. Then we just got the plus y equals 4, right? Well, we don't usually show a 0 right here. It's kind of like the identity property. And we see immediately that the y value there is 4 when x is 0. That's a point on a graph that you could, well, that you could plot. So what about when y is 0? Well, again, this, this zero stuff is going to, well, it's just going to kind of go away right there, right? There's nothing to even to multiply it by. And to solve this one becomes very easy. We just need to divide both sides by negative 4. And we find that x is a negative 1. So that gives me another point to put on the graph, and that's really all I need. But yeah, some professor is going to want you guys to put a lot more than that. And here's what you're going to want to do is... Uh, y values right here, we can see that the coefficient of x and the constant here is, they're both 4 or some kind of multiples of 4 here. So you're going to need multiples of 4 in your y value, something like 4, negative 4, maybe uh, negative 8 or negative 16, maybe negative 28 even. I would work because that's a multiple of 4, okay? Now it's going to change and it will vary depending on the coefficients of x and and y even in the constant. But for a problem like this, this is about as difficult as it should get on the homework. If I'm wrong on that, you guys are going to have to tell me in the comments below, okay? Uh, but in the meantime, uh, those were y, y values. For x values, since there is no coefficient for the y, you can choose anything. Uh, you could choose uh, 1, you could choose 2, you can make these uh, negative 2. Maybe you wanted a negative 5, all right? It all depends as well, though, since ours is on the computer, how far the graph is scaled. For example, if this goes out to 5 and this is negative 5, you certainly wouldn't want to choose something like negative 12 like this, okay? Just keep it within the range, or in this case, the domain of the graph, okay? And same with the y values. You're not going to want to go... If it goes up to 10, you don't want to choose something like 15 down here, okay? I don't know if that goes with negative 5. I'm just trying to demonstrate, okay? It just depends on the size of the graph and also what the coefficient of x is, what the coefficient of y is, and then the constant as well. It will take some playing around with that in order to really figure that out. Now, on the other hand, you're going to have some in what they call slope-intercept form. For these types of, and this is just an example, right? 
For these types of equations, all you're going to want to do is choose values of x and find the uh, corresponding value of y. The reason is because this y value will change as x changes. So uh, here's what I recommend choosing for values of x. Uh, I, I always like to start with 0 and then maybe use 1 and negative 1. See if that gives me values that will fit on the graph. Uh, and generally they will, so I don't, technically I don't even need, necessarily I don't need that bottom row. So let me just show you how this plays out, okay? So again, we got this y equals 3x, but I'm changing x. Let's start with 0, okay? And we'll show you why that plays out so nicely. Well, 3 times 0, once again, is 0. So y equals 0 minus 2, and we find that y equals a negative 2 on this thing. So see how that kind of just played out as this second number right here? That's a good thing. We, we really want that, uh, and that's the y-intercept, which you ought to look at a different lesson to see why that works out so well. But um, uh, if, if you understand that, always use x as 0 for these, okay? Now, on the other hand, we have some other values to choose. And I'm going to go in the negative direction. I'll let you guys try 1 on this, okay? So on this, if I take 3 times negative 1, I get a negative 3. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. That's pretty nice right there. That will fit on most graphs that you'll see. And uh, you guys take a moment, though, and try where x is 1 and see what you get on that. You may have to pause the video here because I'm going to give you the answer here. Bam, there it is. I showed the work. I got that value in there. And these, again, are all ordered pairs that you could put on the graph. You don't really need three. Two will do it. But um, hopefully that, that helps you guys understand what values of x to choose when given slope-intercept form. But there's one other one, okay? So let's look at one more example. So sometimes they'll give you a fraction here. Sometimes they'll even give you a fraction there. But that's usually for later sections, all right? Uh, for now, though, we just need to look at this coefficient of x, which is a fraction. So as usual, I recommend starting with x is 0. That should be an easy one. You'll get 0, 5 there as our ordered pair. But what other values of x should we choose? Because, again, we're only choosing x values for this type of slope-intercept form. Well, to figure out what values to choose, you just need to look to the denominator here. I need to get rid of that denominator if I want whole nice values to work with uh, for the y, okay? So all I need to do to get rid of that is find multiples of 3 and choose them for my x values. That's going to get rid of that fraction stuff. So for example, I could use 3, I could use 6. I could use negative 3, negative 6, maybe negative 9. Again, it doesn't matter. It depends on the scale for your graph. So let's look. When uh, x is 3, so this is what we have, negative 4 thirds times negative 3 plus 5, and that equals y. So let's multiply these two out. You could put that into a calculator, and it should give you a positive 4 on this thing. So I got 4 plus 5, y equals 4 plus 5, so y ends up equaling a positive 9. That's a pretty nice value to put in there. Uh, again, it may not fit completely, so perhaps they may force you to use a positive 3. Well, how does that change things? Well, we multiply these two, now we get a negative 4. Negative 4 plus 5 is a positive 1. So that would be another point to put on the graph. Technically, those should fit. But here's what I want you to do is pause the video and take a moment and try to find the corresponding y value for x is 6, x is negative 6, and x is negative 9. I'm not going to show the work, but I will show you guys the answers for this. So pause the video now if you guys uh, want to try it. Bam, there we go. So there's your values. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Thanks for watching. If you guys know someone that uh, can benefit from this video, go ahead and share it with them. Uh, if you guys have any other questions about the video or any other questions math related, please leave those in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like, guys liked it, if it helped, give me a thumbs up, a like, subscribe to the channel. It really helped me out. Uh, you know, all that other garbage. So uh, thanks for watching, you guys, and we will catch you in class.